Good morning, and thank you all at the American Planning Association for giving me the opportunity to speak with you today at the opening session of your plan today on Capitol Hill. I want to thank Angela Brooks, president of the American Planners Association, for inviting me to be here with you this morning and for that wonderful introduction, but also for the work she and all of you at APA do every single day to support affordable housing in my congressional district and in communities all across the United States. As we all know, the beginning of any effort to address one challenge or another starts with an idea, but it's brought to life with a well thought out and perfectly executed plan, which is why I'm pleased to join those of you with the American Planning Association who help bring policy proposals into reality. And as the ranking member of the Subcommittee on Housing and Insurance, I'm thrilled that you've invited me to speak with you all about the desperate need to make long overdue reforms that will allow far more affordable housing options, that is, in the communities across the country. As we all know, housing is the largest expense for most American families, and cost continues to rise at a pace that's created a housing affordability crisis all over the United States. In almost every community in America, rural, suburban, urban, is getting harder and harder to rent a home put together a down payment or find a home that's affordable for working class families. And there's no question that is in part because government housing policy has failed to keep up with this over the times. Instead of supporting development and promoting competition, state and local governments have imposed needless rules that substantially raise the cost of buying a home or renting a home. At the same time, the federal government has steadily reduced investments in the production of safe, decent, and affordable housing for low and middle income families over time, which has created a shortage that's driven up costs to everyone. To demonstrate how dire the situation is, recent research found that America's housing production fell 7.3 million homes short between 2000 and 2015 causing a housing cost to skyrocket and family budgets to tighten dramatically. It's the fight for fair and affordable housing that deeply motivates my work in Washington, D.C. And as the chair of the Subcommittee on Housing and Insurance and Community Development during the last Congress, under the leadership of housing czar Maxine Waters, our committee passed the most sweeping and significant single investment in housing in the history of the United States of America. This included additional funding to incentivize the elimination of exclusionary, restrictive zoning and land uses to advance fair housing and support the creation of affordable housing in every community. Should the Democrats take the House next Congress, we will be laser focused on advancing these important proposals. No matter what side of the political spectrum you fall on, it's beyond clear that the status quo is not working and reforms are desperately needed. Whether it's restrictive zoning policy or lack of investment from the federal government, all of these factors have added to a housing affordability crisis, but there are steps that can take place and policies that we can implement to make a difference for hardworking families. Of course, as we all know, one of the most impactful ways we can do that it's through zoning reform. While zoning is most often understood as a local issue, and that's certainly where most of the work needs to be done, there are actions Congress and the Biden-Harris administration can take to continue to incentivize communities to allow for more housing uh, construction. As the ranking member of the Subcommittee on Housing and Insurance, I was proud to work with Representative Derek Kildner and Mike Flood and introduced the Yes in My Backyard Act, otherwise known as the YIMBY Act, to help overcome barriers to increasing home construction in communities across the country. The bill would help tackle outdated zoning, painfully slow permitting processes, and discriminatory land use policies to allow for more housing construction with the hope 
that will help lower costs for working and middle class families. Specifically, the bill would encourage the implementation of 22, 22 anti-discriminatory land use policies to facilitate the creation of new affordable housing units in more communities. Okay. Additionally, the bipartisan legislation ensures that recipients of the Community Development Block Grant Program report on policies that have the potential to impact housing affordability. The YIMBY Act, I really like that way, the way we put that, the YIMBY Act, that makes me feel so proud. The YIMBY Act would require these recipients to monitor and report on the progress of certain land use policies intended to promote housing production, including high density, single family and multifamily zoning, modification to height limitations, and efforts to both encourage and reduce minimum lot sizes. This will allow us to gather more information on the policies that are promoting and stifling housing production in every region of the United States. Because the CDBG program plays a vital role in local development, we believe that the bill will foster better collaboration between the federal government, local government, and CDBG beneficiaries. As you all know, you need data and information before you can create a credible plan to address the challenge at hand. And the YMB Act will help provide Congress and local officials with the necessary data to improve housing policy. This legislation passed through the Financial Services Committee last month on a unanimous bipartisan vote. Ladies and gentlemen, a unanimous and bipartisan vote. That's not often here in Washington. The good news is further this that we have the solution, we just need action. While I've been frustrated that housing has not been a priority in the House of Representatives during the 118th Congress, I am hopeful that bipartisan legislation like the YIMBY Act can move forward later this year or at the beginning of the next Congress because we need change now. But change does not just magically happen. It comes from hard work, strong advocacy, and plausible plans that can find consensus from the communities we all serve. As an advocate for the expansion of affordable housing, I am hopeful that you all will take this opportunity to help me push for reforms right now. While you travel the halls of Congress on Capitol Hill, let the leaders know the dire situation families are facing in terms of housing affordability and the need for bipartisan action to incentivize more construction of affordable housing. Thank you again for inviting me to speak with you this morning, and I thank you for all the tremendous work you do on behalf of families in Missouri and all across the United States. Thank you very much.